Hello everyone, welcome to a new series I'm calling a zoo game comparison. And as you'll see in the background, there isn't any actual zoo game gameplay. It's just me drawing the side view of an exhibit and that's because this is an intro episode. And so we don't actually have any zoo play, but zoo gameplay. But we are working on concept art for a bear exhibit. And this exhibit will be built in all the various games I'm going to play in the series. So I've this this is the first time I've kind of drawn something like this, a little concept art for an exhibit, the side view. I'm not really good at landscapes and also geometric shapes I'm not very used to, so drawing is a bit sloppy, but I thought in the end it did kind of turn out right. Just know that everything is like really compressed. You'll see the aerial view later and this drawing is really compressed to kind of show everything in there and also do kind of miss some trees, just because the trees would have blocked the view. but. In the actual exhibit there'd be probably a few more trees. But anyway, in the series, we're going to be playing some various zoo games. And we're going to be building this bear exhibit. Which I will explain why I chose a bear exhibit later on when I show you the final drawings. And we're just going to compare the style, the feel, the gameplay, the mechanics of each of the game. And see how games have changed over the years. So, I'm going to be playing the older games first and younger games will be a bit more will come later on obviously going to end in planet zoo with the full release i know there's a beta but i'm going to wait for the full release to play that just in case they add something for that so this should be a weekly series if everything goes right a new episode every week and i am kind of limited to what games i got so i might skip a few games that you may know of or want in the series sorry Two of the games aren't even actual zoo games, they're just really good for creativity and building, so which you, and you can make zoos in those games, so I'm gonna include them. But I think that's all I have to say about the actual series itself, so let's go and look at the actual exhibit that I've drawn, the aerial view and the final of this speed drawing you see in the background. Okay, so here's an aerial view of the bear enclosure I drew a little while ago. I'm just going to go run through all the features now of the enclosure because later when we actually do the series we'll mainly be talking about the game and not the enclosure. So we'll talk about the enclosure now. So along here we have a little fence that will be transparent. That's why it's a dash line. So probably be chain link. Guests can see when they walk past. Of course have a little underwater viewing area over here. With this little line supposed to represent that it goes down. And we have this shade structure, wooden shade structure, which you should have been able to see in that diagram we worked on a while ago, which I will show after I go through this image. We have a pool, the bears can swim in, two little waterfalls here and here, and a stream. So, really want to test out the water mechanics in each of these games. Of course, we have an elevated viewing here on the left. The guests will walk up and what bears from up there. We have the shelter at the back and a big old staff bath which would be along here. So staff can get in to this gate or can go to the shelter if they want to. And this little bit here is supposed to represent also a higher elevation of this line. So essentially this area over here is slightly higher than this area down here. And we have a climbing frame for the bears. So the reason I chose bears was because bears have the most, I don't know, dynamic features. They have lots of features in the exhibit. So like we have pools and waterfalls and climbing frames. So I'm probably going to use brown bears in my um, bowls. And also because, yeah, bears are, brown bears are available in most of the games I'm going to use. Although I don't think climbing frames are that common in brown bear exhibits. Climbing frames are more what you see in pandas or black bears, but I don't know, we'll put it in. I guess it can also work for polar bears, although polar bears need a larger pool. I guess there's something for every bear in this exhibit. And I know some of the features I mentioned, like the underwater viewing or the elevated path, won't be available in some games, so I will work around that because obviously not everything is going to work in every game. 
it's like elevated viewing I might just use terrain instead of actual elevated paths or underwater viewing I'll just have a pool here and just a normal glass fence around there anyway let's move on to the final diagram that I was doing in the time-lapse earlier okay so this is the final product of that drawing I was working on so just before I talk about it I want to mention two things one, like I said earlier, I'm not used to drawing landscapes like this and also these geometric shapes are a bit foreign to me. I'm more used to drawing organic stuff and like stuff in like, I don't know, two dimensions, not really 3D. And then another thing is that I also added color to this, which does gives it a bit of a, makes it a bit, I don't know, makes it look a bit better, but also color is also foreign to me. I usually leave my drawings in black and white, so, but granted those two things out of the way I think it still looks quite decent especially for by my landscape standards and and that I wasn't copying anything usually if I copy something it would be a much better but this just came from my mind so I think from what I did is quite well if I obviously work on this I'm sure I could get quite good at drawing concept art but that's for the future so anyway here's the final product as you can see we have this is the underwater viewing area and like I said earlier, this thing is very compressed. If you look at the aerial image, this underwater viewing area should be quite a while wider. Could probably add an extra bench in there. Yeah. So I'll just put. Ooh. What 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 is happening? I'm trying to draw two. I'm trying to say times two. Okay, times Z apparently. But anyway, uh, we have the chain link fence on this side. You can see the staff gate, a bit of it over there. There's a shelter in the back. And of course have these little gates that the bears go in and out of their night room. And you can see a bit of the elevated path sticking through there. And the stream. And the waterfall. And of course, a big old bear. But yeah, the and the climbing frame will be somewhere across there. As you can see, I did add some wire, it kind of acts as electric wire to keep the bears from climbing over here. And, yeah, so this image, plus the aerial image, I'll kind of be using as references for the actual uh, zoo games that we're going to build in. going to use the aerial as a blueprint, and then at the end we'll just compare this image and the aerial to how the actual game turns out. Yeah, I think that's about it. I actually should have added a person with scale. Let me just quickly. There we go. That's a person for scale. But yeah, that's all I got to show for today with the drawings. And hopefully you'll stick around for the first game, which I'm not too sure on the scheduling, but should be out quite soon. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.